Hello and welcome to another devlog. I want to start by saying thank you to everybody who's subscribed already and helped me pass the 100 subscriber mark. And for those of you that haven't, make sure you click that subscribe button. It helps me out. The first thing I worked on was a save system, which is kind of boring behind the scenes work, but it's pretty necessary for most games now. In the last devlog, I showed some issues with the shop, like having to buy all the upgrades twice before they got saved. Now I'm having similar issues adding this new save system in. Except now instead of not getting the tool, you don't get charged for the tool. And then fixing that problem made sure that the tools don't get saved instead. What it all came down to was making sure certain steps happened in the proper order. I have the save system set up so that the game will save at the end of each day. To help me test the save system, I added in a main menu that lets you start a new game or load an existing one. For a while now, I've wanted the size of the fish to be based on their weight. I think I mentioned this in the last devlog, since I added in the line weight mechanics. My first attempt was to set the scale of the fish as a 1 to 1 ratio with the weight. I knew exactly what was going to be wrong with that, but I wanted to test the concept first. I scaled down the fish quite a bit, but since some of them were still larger than the default size I had, I had some other issues. Mainly some of the larger fish come through the surface of the water since the silhouette I use is a 3D model. I can get past this problem by putting the fish further underwater, but because of the angle of the camera, the further underwater the fish are, the further they appear to be from the bobber when they're technically in range. For now my solution to this problem is to scale the fish differently based on their weight. The problem with this is, a very light fish can appear to be the same size as a very heavy fish. Another solution I think I'll try is just to scale the length and width of the fish, but leave the height the same. I'm not sure what that'll do to the overall shape though. At this point I started focusing more on the appearance and sound of the game, and I started out by modeling a fishing rod. Considering I'm making a fishing game, maybe it shouldn't have taken 10 months to do that, but I've been putting off working on art. I also added an armature so that I would be able to animate it later. I spent a ton of time working on animations, mostly because I had no idea what I was doing. I'd like to do some research and learn more about how others make assets and animate them for their games, because it felt like I was doing everything the hard way. So if you know of any resources I could use, leave them in the comments below. I modeled some ores that the character will use up until the player buys the first upgrade for a motor. This introduced an interesting new challenge, because I had to find a way that the player could equip the fishing rod when they're standing and fishing, and equip the oars when they sit down to row the boat. I didn't have much luck finding examples of how people do this in games, so what I wound up doing is having the player always holding all of the items, but I disable the renderer for things that shouldn't show up. To help the player out a little bit more, I added a description area into the shop. It shows the description for whatever upgrades are available, and just like the rest of the shop, it's filled out automatically from the scriptable objects that I use to make tools. I started working on adding in some sounds too, and the first sound I made was a wave sound. I made it with some rice and a lot of processing in Audacity. I also took some inspiration from a talk from Unite 2016. It shows how to use scriptable objects to create audio events. If you're interested, it's called Overthrowing the Mono Behavior Tyranny in a Glorious Scriptable Object Revolution. I can leave a link to it in the description too. Using these scriptable audio events, it made it a lot easier to add in all the other sounds. I also set a goal of getting rid of all the ugly gray shapes for this devlog, so I started creating textures for everything. Most of the problems I had with this came from the character. Specifically, the weird seams around his head. I was able to improve it, but you can still kind of see them. I also looked back to my UI in this devlog. In the previous devlog, I handled the shop generation, and I thought I did a pretty good job, but when I changed the resolution, I noticed that the buttons didn't necessarily generate in the center of the screen. 
The problem was that I was using the screen height to set the position of the buttons, but I found out that if you have a canvas that scales to the size of the screen, the size of the canvas is not the same as the size of the screen. After I fixed this problem, I went through and I adjusted the rest of the UI to make sure that it all scales right, no matter what the resolution is. I looked a few times at ways that I could implement a fishing line, and a lot of what I found was rope simulation. That's not quite what I was looking for, so in the end I ended up using a line renderer. Before I could do that though, I had to find a way to locate the tip of the fishing rod so that the line came from the fishing rod and went to the bobber. And luckily, the rig that I added to the fishing rod shows up in Unity with all of the bones, so I was able to use the bone at the very end of the fishing rod as the starting point for the line. Then I just had to add a material so the line wasn't bright pink, and change the width from 1 to 0 0.01 so it wasn't the size of a car. I finished off with a little more focus on UI, starting with a display for the controls. I added a section to the HUD that shows the controls for the game that's based on what the current input device is, which was actually really easy to do using the controls changed event on the player input component. Then I made a really simple message system that gives you information on the fish that you're trying to catch, so it tells you whether it escaped or if it was too heavy, or if you catch it it tells you what kind of fish it was and how much it weighed. And last, I finally decided to add a way to tell the depth of the fish, so it just has a number floating over each of the fish that tells you how deep it is. That's it for this devlog, so as always, if you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.